Elon Musk, the visionary CEO of Tesla, has a bold plan for the company's future. While the automotive division currently accounts for 87% of Tesla's revenues, Elon Musk is determined to see the energy division grow to be just as large from a 5% base. This may seem like a lofty goal, but when you consider that the global market for energy is larger than that of cars, it starts to make sense. During Tesla's most recent conference call, Elon Musk emphasized Tesla's three main pillars, solar and wind energy generation, energy storage systems, and electric cars. By creating a complete ecosystem, Tesla vehicle owners can benefit from having solar panels on their homes and battery packs to store the power, making it possible to charge their cars at any time. This, in turn, can drive sales of energy storage systems to consumers. At the same time, increased electric vehicle usage would require the grid to be upgraded with renewable solar energy and large storage units like Tesla's Megapack. Again, electric cars being the primary driving force for battery storage systems. But there's more to it than that. This sequence is linear and unidirectional, but Tesla has figured out a way to loop the system back on itself, amplifying the cycle and making energy storage a secret weapon to help sell more electric vehicles. And before we continue, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and have a look at our website, themarketisopen.com, where we have instant stock quotes and a brand new set of financial data going back 15 years, and it's all freely available. Back in September, it was revealed that Tesla had updated its utility-scale energy storage solution, the Megapack. This is the largest product that Tesla ships to commercial players, and given that they are now ramping it up using their new mega factory in Lathrop, California, this multi-million dollar device is growing to dominate the energy side of Tesla's business. The new mega pack had increased in price by about a million dollars per unit over the previous version, but Tesla managed to pack in far more battery cells but in a larger form factor. Megapack has a capacity of 3.9 megawatt hours which is 50% higher than the previous version, although it weighs 60% more at 83,000 pounds and is 6 feet longer than its predecessor. Due to the large weight increase, the new Megapack is actually less efficient than the previous one, which suggested at the time that Tesla switched to using lithium iron phosphate batteries or LFP batteries. While less energy dense, these batteries can be about 20 to 30% cheaper. While Tesla's vehicles need to be as efficient as possible, consumers for stationary storage don't really care since the Megapack sits in one area and doesn't move. And for stationary storage, LFP batteries have a number of other benefits, such as reduced maintenance, long cycle life, efficient charging, and great safety characteristics, which are exactly what Tesla needs for this type of device, as weight and volume efficiency aren't an issue. Now, Megapacks are selling like hotcakes, as they have huge benefits to utilities, as proven by their now numerous deployments all around the world. Megapack offers grid stability by storing large amounts of energy and releasing it quickly when needed. For this reason, they are an alternative to fossil fuel-powered peaker plants. They can also save money by reducing the need to build new power plants and transmission lines, and allow for ancillary services to grid operators such as frequency modulation and voltage control services. There's so much demand for this product that Tesla can't keep up, with new orders only expecting delivery starting at the end of 2024. However, Tesla has built a new mega factory, which it says is targeting 10,000 mega pack units per year, or roughly 40 gigawatt hours of equivalent storage capabilities. This compares and would be incremental to the approximately 5 gigawatt hours that the entire company currently produces at an annual rate from its Giga Nevada battery plant, which also continues to grow Megapack production. While we've been highlighting the gravity of Tesla's Megapack plans for more than a year now, investors are only just starting to see its potential. At the same time, the overexcitement has drawn in critics such as notorious Tesla short seller Jim Chanos who doesn't believe Megapack will be as lucrative as people think. 
Jim Chanos references an article entitled The Astonishing Economics of the Tesla Megapack that claims Megapack could achieve an astounding 50% gross margins, meaning Tesla can produce a Megapack for half of what they sell it for. Jim Chanos says that the Tesla bulls believe that demand for its Megapacks is 40 gigawatts, and they are sold out for years. Tesla currently sells a 3.9 megawatt hour Megapack for $2.6 to $2.7 million, or $680,000 per megawatt hour. 40 gigawatt would be $27 billion in future revenues, and at 50% gross margin would be, but he interrupts himself and says, first, please stop. A little over one gigawatt of battery storage was installed in the US in 2020, and that is expected to rise to 7.5 gigawatts for $5 billion by 2025. And Chanos references a snippet showing that this data was collected by a natural resources and consulting firm, which calls for the 7.5 gigawatts by 2025. Now, first of all, there may be some confusion with the units of measurement, which are important. Storage capacity is measured in gigawatt hours, megawatt hours, etc., which is a unit of energy, whereas gigawatts is a unit of power. The inconsistencies alone in Chanos' comments and in the article he found greatly reduces credibility. In 2022, Tesla alone deployed 6.5 gigawatt hours of energy storage. So either Tesla has 86% market share on Chanos' 2025 predictions, or Jim Chanos picked the first article he could find that agreed with his point and went with that, even though the article makes little to no sense. Just to give you an idea of how big the energy generation and storage business is in the US alone, Coal plants in the United States generated roughly 70,000 gigawatt hours on average in each month last year. And coal has been in decline in the US with much tougher regulatory environments which aim to slowly replace the fossil fuel. Now this is energy generation, so if we divide it by 30 days at 24 hours a day, we get about 97 gigawatts of power. For reference, Tesla sold 100 megawatts of solar in the quarter or 1,000 times less than whatever is left of coal in the country. But that's still a massive number. If the US could instead generate that amount of power with solar panels, how many batteries would it take to support that solar? If for instance you need to store energy for a day and a half or 36 hours, that equates to 3,500 gigawatt hours of energy. Now if Tesla's aspirational goal, which they're not even close to yet, is to achieve an insane 40 gigawatt hours of battery storage. But even at that level, it would only be just 1% of the capacity needed for that 3,500 gigawatt hours of energy for just a day and a half. Not to mention that coal has declined to just 19% of US energy generation down from 42% in 2014. So the total energy generation market is actually more than five times larger than coal. We're still talking US only, and we still live in a world where electric vehicle adoption makes up less than 1% of the global car fleet. Energy usage would be much, much larger when EVs start to make a dent in the existing ICE car fleet. Elon Musk has said in the past that US energy production would need to double to transition to EVs. In other words, the overall energy market is absolutely massive and will continue to grow dramatically and the rest of the world will also need storage solutions to support renewable energy. Tesla makes up almost nothing, an immaterial part of the market right now, with their $1.7 billion of sales in the most recent quarter, which is why Elon Musk is saying that energy can grow to become just as large as vehicles since there's a long way to go. The global energy market is greater than the auto industry, especially since energy is used for more things than just cars. And so Jim Chanos is missing some basic calculations to show that there is a need for Tesla's products and that demand is there. Also, just because something hasn't happened in the past doesn't mean it can't happen in the future. The cost of batteries have come down so much in price that just 10 years ago, it would have been completely infeasible to deploy something like a Megapack. But with costs coming down an order of magnitude, now battery storage has the ability to seriously help disrupt the fossil fuel industry since it makes renewable sources like wind and solar much more viable, which have also come down in price. Solar and wind energy generation alone is sporadic. 
Either you have too much and need to figure out a way to dump it somewhere, or you have too little and can't keep up with the energy usage. Large batteries solves this. Now Jim Chanos goes on to say that Tesla isn't the only company selling battery storage, and he references other companies like LG and CATL, which also sell similar products. This is another one of those the competition is coming type things. First off, as we just described, the market for battery storage is potentially massive and can easily support many players in the space. If you have a view that the pie is limited to just 7.5 gigawatt hours by 2025, then of course you would come to a different conclusion. It's also important to realize that just because a similar product exists doesn't mean it's equivalent. For instance, modern batteries are now controlled with complex software. Taking a step back, the software in a Tesla vehicle, available for use by any individual consumer today, is difficult for some short sellers to fathom. Therefore, software for a multi-million dollar commercial battery may be even more difficult to understand. Tesla has a product called AutoBidder, which it uses to negotiate energy prices for utilities. They leverage their AI and machine learning team of engineers to build this software, which can improve grid reliability and make predictions in order to save money for commercial customers. So LG not only has to compete on hardware, but is now up against the company rooted in Silicon Valley software. Scale is also key to reducing cost. And while Jim Chanos believes that 50% gross margins are impossible, and they may indeed be quite high, he says that LG Energy is the most well-integrated battery company in the world and only has gross margins of 16%, whereas Tesla has just 9% margins. Now, there's actually no evidence that LG is the most integrated battery company in the world. They're actually a Tesla supplier of battery cells. If they're so well integrated, then why sell batteries to Tesla and not simply focus on making consumer end products? According to EcoWatch, LG's home battery pricing is not that attractive, and they compete directly with Tesla's Powerwall, which is one of the most popular home solar batteries in the United States. So it seems that making batteries isn't as easy as it appears, and Tesla does have vast expertise in designing battery modules, inverters, chips, thermal control systems, and other electronics where they can leverage each of these items from their electric vehicle knowledge in order to build high quality battery packs. If anything, EVs give Tesla an advantage of being more well integrated than LG. Tesla's mega pack isn't just a stack of commoditized battery cells. Inverters, for instance, are expensive and difficult to make well, and the mega pack has a ton of them. According to Tesla, each battery module within the mega pack is integrated with its own inverter. The previous Megapack had 17 independent battery modules, and based on a recent photo that Tesla released of the internals of the new Megapack, it looks like there are 24 modules, meaning 24 inverters. According to the photo, it seems that each module is made up of a stack of three battery packs, meaning that there are 72 battery packs in total used to form Megapack. If we divide the total 3.9 megawatt hours capacity by 72 individual packs, we get 54 kilowatt hours per battery pack, which is roughly the size of a Model 3 standard range battery pack. So Tesla could have some synergies there. But the crux of this gross margin debate is that it's assumed that the batteries make up the largest cost component of the mega pack. This may be true, but the other components could still add up to cost more than the batteries when all combined. If we use $150 per kilowatt hour at the pack level, which is around the industry average, and Tesla's cost could be lower, especially after switching to LFP batteries. But just to be conservative, we still only get $585,000, which is a quarter to a fifth of the upwards $2 million that Tesla charges per mega pack. Even if we add in $50,000 increments for inverters, thermal systems, electronics, delivery, etc., it seems difficult for the estimation to even get to a million dollars, which appears to be in line with the 50% margin theory. But one thing that gets overlooked is the factory itself. This needs to be accounted for in the cost to produce a mega pack. The machines need to be running, there's labor, there's energy usage, etc., which all add up, especially when volumes are low. The factory building and equipment itself is also depreciated over time, 
and that depreciation is effectively spread across each megapack. Again, that makes volume very important, since if Tesla can spread that cost over its goal of 10,000 megapacks per year, it would be almost negligible versus spreading the cost over just a couple hundred megapacks. And so that's very interesting because Jim Chanos is looking at the third quarter of 2022 and determining that megapack margins are 9%, which is a very rough estimate because this is for Tesla's entire energy division, including solar, which may actually lose money and drag down margins. In the fourth quarter, however, margins for the entire energy division jumped to 12%, which is a massive increase in a single quarter. And so if that was attributed to the growth of Megapack, which will eventually dominate this line in the income statement, given that it could generate 20 to $27 billion in revenue, then the margins could actually be quite high when that happens. Right now, Tesla only appears to be in the single digit percentages on its way to achieving this 40 gigawatt hour capacity target. And so there's a huge runway to scale this and drastically cut costs, spread depreciation and factory costs over more megapacks, and also dwarf the potentially money losing solar business, which will bring megapacks high margin to the forefront of the energy division. LG, on the other hand, has 16% margins for its entire mature energy business, but they sell many different types of products, including consumer and commodity products, making it sort of an apples to oranges comparison. Tesla Energy is currently about a quarter the size of LG Energy, but once they get closer to reaching capacity of their new Megapack factory, they will easily surpass the size of LG's entire energy business, giving them better economics and economies of scale at which point we'll get a better picture of Tesla's true margins. Now, one of the crucial points made in the astonishing economics of the Tesla Megapack article is that the Inflation Reduction Act provides massive tax credits for battery storage systems, potentially up to 50%. While a chunk of this depends on domestic production, as well as other factors, Tesla currently uses LFP batteries produced by China's CATL, so they won't get that portion of the credits. However, they've just recently announced a 100 gigawatt hour 4680 battery facility expansion at Giga Nevada. And Elon Musk has said that Tesla does intend to use these 4680 cells inside stationary storage devices. So this could unlock even more tax credits over the next 10 years. And a huge part of Tesla's margins could come from these highly lucrative credits. A 50% credit would instantly give Tesla 50% margins, which is incremental to their already high margins on the Megapack. Now, just like vehicles, Tesla may decide to reduce pricing in the future in order to reach a broader market. But currently it appears that Tesla has actually raised Megapack prices due to the explosion in demand. This comes full circle in that we can clearly see how increased energy usage from electric vehicles will ultimately drive more battery storage systems to be used alongside renewable energy generation. But Tesla is also leveraging Megapack as their secret weapon to sell more vehicles. During Tesla's fourth quarter conference call, Tesla CFO Zach Kirkhorn stated that going forward, investors should focus less on gross margins for each of Tesla's individual businesses and more on operating margins, which are the margins for the entire business grouped together as a whole. Essentially, this means that Tesla will be using the ultra high margins from Megapack, which is still a small yet rapidly growing business, to level out the margins from the automotive side of the company. This is how Tesla can cut price on vehicles and aim to keep the company's overall margins stable in the future. They expect Megapack to grow into a much larger and extremely profitable business and use that leverage to make their automotive division more competitive something that almost no other automaker can do since they don't sell batteries, especially not in high volume. And this creates an amplifying feedback loop within Tesla's ecosystem since vehicle sales continue to drive battery storage sales. So that over time, this will strengthen both Tesla's automotive and energy positions. So do you think Tesla's Megapack can eventually achieve 50% margins and is it possible to do that without the use of government tax credits? Don't forget to watch my previous videos on Tesla Megapack, 
please hit the like button and subscribe. We would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that help to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.